Okay, we're back working this old Oreo again. So this here is a gas uh, priming system here. This is the gas cap that goes in the bike. And you have a, a priming pump here for priming your motor in cold weather. Basically it's just a big syringe. So it uh, sucks up a load of fuel into here. So you have a little hole right here in the end. And you go ahead and open up a valve on your top of your cylinder head. And you stuff this against it and you shove it down on it, shove the fuel on your motor. So this is supposed to have a, like a cork seal down in here to uh, seal it. It goes in between these two washers right here. And I need something to keep this thing from rattling around inside the hole here. Otherwise it'll do damage. So you can see the hole down in there. So you need something to go in there and take up the gap. It helps seal it up a little bit because we don't have any kind of a seal here at the very top. This just slides up and down right here. Right now it's really rusty so it kind of stays put right now but that's not how it's supposed to be. And the spring here is from when you top up you don't have a hard stop. So basically I need to duplicate whatever hole size this is. So I'm going to grab a couple transfer punches here. and That's the one size that goes in pretty close. And this is the next size up here that doesn't go in the hole. So next thing I had to find something to put in here. So I was looking at oil caps and stuff like that, but these are pretty hard plastic and I'm worried about them being too brittle. So then I got a can of stable stuff here which has a little bit softer plastic. And I accidentally had a hole in it. Right after I cut it with a pocket knife. I don't know how that happened. So now I'm going to take this. Take the transfer punch, which has a center punch in the front of it. Stick that down in there like that and go ahead and tap it there, which will put a little of a hole in it. If I'm lucky, it won't split it in half. And then hopefully I'm going to leave me an embossed circle. And I can go ahead and put my pocket knife to get it uh, close enough that it'll go inside the hole in here. And if it gets real close, I can grind it or file a little bit too, maybe. It's a matter if this is too brittle. I was cutting with my pocket knife and it's kind of brittle. But it is softer than a gas cap. I mean, yeah, than the, these oil caps here are. Huh? So if this doesn't work, I'll have to find something else to make it from. But you know, we got to figure out something to do to make things work around here. And it works real good. Anyway, I'm going to take two hands to do this, so go ahead and see what happens here. Okay, I went ahead and dimpled it here. So I didn't split it and crack it. So you can see how the center transfer punch here. Get it pretty good. Bowed it out. So I left a nice little dimple in the piece of wood there. So now I'm gonna go ahead and try to cut this out with a hole punch. So these are leather cutting punches, so I'm gonna see if I can make this look halfway decent. I'm not sure how good this is gonna work. My guess is it's going to screw it all up. Hey, what the hell? If you don't try it, you don't know, right? You appear to cut it. Looks like it's a little off center though, but yeah, what do you expect? Looks like I'm way off center. So maybe I'll have to do a dimple differently. Maybe I should cut it first, then dimple it. Maybe that's the secret. It's a good thing we got more material here. Hey, a brand new piece to work with. Diamond. It's like a real diamond, huh? Alright, let's try that again. I guess the first thing we should see is if this falls in the hole. Yeah, it looks pretty close, though. Might actually work. That'll be different. Okay, let's see. Helps to put it on the right side. Just to be different. I think I might have cut that too small, too. 
Another good hit. Yeah, I didn't think I had too much to spare there. It's pretty thin. Not that I'm stingy with my stuff. Okay, it looks like a pretty good circle. Put in my dimple hole there. Let's see how good I am dimpling. Try a bigger one. This looks like a problem waiting to be worse. Yeah, better than I thought it was going to be. Halfway close. There's a pretty good dimple to it. Okay, now we can get a hole through this thing somehow. Bet you that's going to be dangerous. That's called using your fingers or something else. I could always use an extra hole in my hand. Alright, first thing I do is measure our rod right here and see what kind of thread we got. So it looks like we're uh, just under 3 16 to start. I'm going to take these two nuts off. So I had to take a cheap ass import wrench I don't give a squat about. Ground it down so it's thinner than my good American wrench I do care about. That allows me to get in here right up tight on those two nuts because they, they are pretty close to each other. Oh and those are tight too. Oh those are not coming loose. No, those are definitely not coming off. So we're going to go back and warm it up with a torch a little bit and see if we can do some more damage here because this is not coming off. That's going to screw up the whole plan if that don't work. All right, well, we'll be back see what happens here. All right, we're back. Got the two nuts off. Definitely uh, threads are not happy. It has some kind of a locking compound on there that they had back in the 30s. Didn't know they had Loctite back then. Definitely had something. Okay, went ahead and measured this. It looks like it's about a 640 thread. I don't have a die here for that, so I have to get one out of the old machine shop or just put it back together the way it is. So I measured diameter where 129 thousandths. So I'm taking 136 thousand drill and drilling out the little spacer here just pushing down against the board with my fingers and didn't draw any blood so that's a good sign Here's our little, uh, little washers here. Turn it on first. Looks like a little lock washer. This one's a flat washer. This one's a flat washer. I'm going to put the flat washer down first. This stuff's pretty small. So I'm going to take our little piece of stuff here that we made. Stick that on there. So we have a little bit of a build up on that. I'm sure it's going to work really good with a file. So we'll try a file here. It's actually working better than I thought it would. Clean it up a little bit. I got a bunch of goo on it. Oh, that was that label was on there. 
That goo is glunt gum from label gum. There we go, that got it cleaned up. Guess we need a little bit of brake clean on there. That's a good can of brake clean. No more propellant there in that can, but we got some liquid out. We have just enough to do what we need to do. Clean it up. Okay, so now we get back to our little thing here. Appears to go in there pretty tight. That's good. Take that little lock washer we had right here, stick that on that. And we'll take the bad nut first. Definitely did not want to come off. What a shocker, it doesn't want to go back on either. There it goes. That's pretty good. A little bit of tension on there. Yeah, this might even work. As long as the gasoline alcohol mix they have in California don't destroy it. Okay. Yeah, that looks pretty darn nice actually. Okay, I'll go ahead and jam nut this thing down. Sides moving, figures. That's enough torque. Okay, looks like we got our got what we needed there. Pretty damn round too. Not bad. Surprise myself every now and then. Okay, it's even cupped the right direction to, to draw fluid. It pull up this way, so we would dig in. Now let's see how close we were on our hole size here. Appears to be a little bit tight. So I'm going to have to go in back and do a light sanding on this, I guess. So I can get this thing to go in the hole very well. There we can see it there. So anyway, it's uh it's protesting a little bit. So I'm gonna take this one back and do a little light sanding on the surface grinder. Try to get it where I can put it inside the hole right here, and then see if it'll work. It actually might work if I wanted it. It probably will work. I didn't really want it to, but hell, what the hell? If we can make it work, let's go for it. So I'm gonna go play this a little bit, see what happens. I'll be back. Okay, I just got this ground. So there's what it looks like now. So uh, a little hard grinding these things square, but basically I took a V-block, held it in a V-block here. Put it against the grinder and just gr turned it like this. We got to where we grind halfway around. So now it's uh, that. Now I put a little Loctite up here on the very tip here, a little capillary action stuff. That's this 290 stuff. It'll soak into uh, threaded fasteners and holes and stuff. So that'll go in there and Loctite into threads in here just in case it, the double jam that doesn't hold it. So that'll hold it. Okay, so now we got our Assembly here, put a little, little lubricant in there. My favorite CRC, of course. Okay, so then we got this here just plunges in there. It slips into the thread and it gets tight in here. It's pretty tight, see? Came out the first time. 
Guess it didn't want to come out the second time. Got a nut that holds it. There it goes. Hold that down. <clears throat> it doesn't like coming out. <clears throat> Man. Definitely does not like coming out. Probably should free the rust up on this side first. Ah, there it goes. We have a little bit of rust build up right here. Maybe we should knock some of that down a little bit. Okay, I got this gas cap working here now. So, so how that works. So now it goes up and down now. And you have the spring right there where it tops out. So, that'll work pretty good. It's actually a workable unit, surprisingly. All right, so I got quite a bit of work done on this today. <clears throat> got the petcocks up in here. So I've got them where I can they clear the head down here. Clear the gas tank barely on the top. Shouldn't be up that high anywhere though. So I got that in there. We got the lines back in here where they're not hitting on each other. <clears throat> I might wind up putting uh, some rubber in between here and zip tie them together to stop some vibration. But for now, each one is not hitting each other. I uh, got that all back up under there. I got the spacers made up under here and installed. And here's our rubber we had in there, so let's squash it together. I got that one, I got this one back here. So those are all up in there. <clears throat> you got the wire loom for right here is what this tab is. This is for the spark plug cables right here. I haven't got those on there yet. So I got two wire tabs there. And so. Not sure how the throttle cable is going to go yet, but probably have some kind of a bracket on the head here to hold it. But <clears throat> we'll work on that stuff later. So, pretty much got this stuff all back together. I still got to work on this chain guard nut here, which I haven't done yet. And I'll have to make a spacer or find a spring that goes back in there. I haven't decided yet. I haven't tracked that part down yet. I got the rear stand all up on here. Spent a lot of, a couple, two, three hours working on this. It was all bent and twisted and mangulated. That's a good word, right? So I had to make a sleeve in here because we had the right bolt. We had one bolt here that was rusted solid in here. I had to heat up a torch and keep beat it out and then clean all up, get it back working. There's actually a spring right here with a sleeve and a shoulder bolt. This one here is just a straight bolt with no spring. So I went ahead and made up a sleeve to sleeve it up to the stand so now the stand fits good and tight. So it all works pretty good. And the strand's pretty straight, so it should go up on top of it pretty easily. When it's in there correctly. The problem is though, it has a little interference with the tire right here. So boom, right there it hits. So I was hoping to put the stand catch right here, on here to hold it. But uh, it appears that we're gonna have some issues with doing it that way. The pan it over there was able to do that with that stand right on that bike, but for some reason the 45 they, it's too short. They got this mounted lower, I guess, or something. I'm not sure what. But anyway, the relationship is wrong. <clears throat> I was thinking about possibly bending it here a little bit higher, but I can't bend it up high enough to make a difference. It'd have to be a half inch of a bend. And we have a little bit of a crest right here between here, here in the middle, so I could bend it a little bit, but. I don't think there'd be enough I can gain. 
I might try it though, just for the hell of it. But anyway, these tires are just too big in diameter. If you had the 18s on here like you're supposed to, it probably would clear. The problem is this is only supposed to go right to here. It's not supposed to be way to hell up here. So, so I just, you know, when you do a bobber bikes here, things change a little bit. But anyway, I've given up on it yet, but I'm not looking too promising. We got the new coil up mounted up in here. <clears throat> I got the other petcock in here now. Same deal, this one clears up under here. Makes a full circle. Once again, you don't need to do that, but it does. It's tight. And see, it's only got about 15, 20 uh, clearance, but it clears. I also have clearance back here on the fuel, on the oil line, which is very important. So you have to have that clearance. So, like I said, it gets, it's all tied up in there. That's why I made the lines like I did. I knew there were gonna be some clearance issues, but right now it's all working. Got the oil lines all remounted back up in here. Got the shift linkage up in here, bent it around to clear. So it clears the carburetor up in here when you shift it into low gear. Got the uh, clutch working here by releasing it here. Still pretty stiff, but it does move. Whoops. So we're in neutral right now. Even though the uh, shift gate says we're not. See, the neutral is actually way up here. Not back here. Second gear should be right there, not back here. It's actually flush with that line. High gear is correct and low gear is correct. Now the problem is, is this is 30, 35, 36 shift gate, shift lever, and the transmission is a 3940 tranny with a late style shifter on it. So the biggest thing is the shift drum inside the tranny does not match the shift gate because it was never made to be together this way. So it's kind of a ass backwards and doesn't work right. <clears throat> but at least high gear is high gear and low gear is low gear. That's a plus. So when you ride this bike, you're going to have fun with neutral in a second, but the other two are there. So fun, fun, fun. That's what makes these bikes interesting to ride. I had to bend the lever here quite a bit right in here inwards to get tension on the gate here. So, so it has tension to the inside. If you just have them rattling here, they're going to rattle themselves to pieces. So that's not good. But uh, and I had to retwist this a little bit to make everything line up. So all this clears. You know, I had to make clear the carburetor and all that stuff. So a lot of stuff going on there. A lot of hand fitting. The uh, we had the gas caps up here. The original brass ones got them cleaned up a little bit, but not too nice. You can still see all the pitting up on on there, but they're shiny, so that's good. So it gives you a nice vintage look. The oil up pump here does not function. <clears throat> that's deactivated, but it does still go up and down. If you move it up and down, it'll probably leak though. That's why I keep it where it is. I have an O-ring jammed in there. So we, we turned in the hand pump, which used to come out of here, and now is now the drain plug for the oil tank, which they never had because they never drained the oil. You just used oil. It was always clean. Well, this system now pumps back, so it's different. <clears throat> so we got that all in there. We had the primary all cut out here before. So we got a little bit of clearance in our shift rod back here, shift linkage. It's pretty much uh, worn out back there. There we go. Evidently that lever has an oval hole in there instead of a round hole. So, usually we had back then, that training was built probably 10 or 12 years ago. <coughs> but uh, anyway, it's all it's how it's supposed to be right now. Here's where the clutch is supposed to be. Supposed to have a little bit of clearance in it just like that. So that's how they're supposed to be. So anyway, the next thing I do is work on this fuel line. And then I should be able to hook some power to it once I get the plug wires made also. And then see if this thing will run again. It ran a few years ago, so I know it runs, but it hasn't run in quite a while. The gas line fittings are over here. So I need to make my fuel lines. So this is going to basically come out at that other petcock over here, wherever it is over here. We're going to make a big circle down behind all these lines here, coming around the back side. Then we come in through here, and then this here is going to be somewhere in this area here. This one here, I'm going to have to make a tight bend, get going this way, and then follow this line here, circle back around into this here, 
So this thing will probably be somewhere sitting about in this position here. And then we'll have to come out of here and make a curve and basically follow this line over your carburetor over here. And I'm going to have to make a fuel uh, strainer for this, which is the filter assembly. That's these things here. So I brought in a few pieces to play with. So this here is uh, one that's been plugged up, which is the correct one, I think. This one here is a late style 49.15 later. This is one that's kind of used, otherwise known as screwed up. So these here have a screen inside of them. So basically these just hang off of here. Like this. Just, of course this nut's all screwed up, but it's always nice. There it is. All right, so that goes like that, and then our fuel line is going to come out of here and go right into this. So that's how the system works. So we have to make that piece up. So I'll play with that a little bit tomorrow or the next day. Try to get that done up, and then like I said, once we got some fuel in it, and then we can go ahead and put uh, put gas and oil in the tanks up here and see if they still don't leak. <laughs> they didn't leak when I tested them, but we'll find out. So anyway, that's where we're at for now, and we'll continue on. Uh, Another day or so.